So for the people that don't know the transfer process, you obviously everyone sees the people tweeting that, hey, I'm entering my name in the transfer portal or the or the reporters kind of reporting on it. What is it actually like entering the transfer portal? Is, is there paperwork to fill out? When do coaches start contacting you? Or is it just like, hey, I'm sending a tweet out. Whoever sees it can just start messaging me. What was kind of the actual process that goes into entering the portal nowadays? Yeah, it actually is kind of a long process. Once you kind of make that decision that you want to transfer, I mean, I don't I don't know how a lot of guys do it, but I think for me, I, I wanted to go tell coach and, you know, kind of bounce it off him, make sure he's okay with it and get his thoughts on it, you know, see if it's a good idea for me, blah, 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 you know, see if it's okay with him. And then um, he's got to make sure, and he's got to go tell like the compliance people that the uh, you have to go fill out like a release and they have to like actually release you into the portal basically from the school. So you're not like on the team anymore and all that. And then once you sign that paperwork and it gets, uh, I don't know who they send it off to, but people like review it and they like, uh, basically release you into like this list of players that enter the portal or whatever it's called. Um, and I think that list gets sent out to different coaches and they can check it on like synergy or whatever it is and like who's entered the portal and where they're from and what their stats are and all that stuff. So they can just kind of review it and certain schools look at what positions they need or what what skills people have and all that kind of stuff. And they go over it and schools reach out to you, honestly. Within the first like couple hours, I would say you normally hear from schools and, and schools know they're generally pretty on top of it, especially the more aggressive programs that like to get people out of the, out of the portal. Um, I was kind of in the portal when it was the, the wild, wild West. And I'm kind of one of the last uh, classes remaining from that time where COVID you got that, that one time transfer rule. So um, at that time it was crazy. There was like over a thousand people in it, whatever. So it's probably a little different than it is now, but I remember when I went in, you hear from school so fast because it's just like, that's, the end thing to do now you go get guys that have experience and and have skills that you know and then they can they can see what the, they want to do with it and how it works with their program but um before we get back to Ross talk i gotta tell you guys about the best way to make money on sports i've been in search of the best way to fire on sports for the last year or so i've tried every sports book all the different apps but prize picks is the best way to make money on sports on prize picks you pick players and not teams each player has a set total stat projection so let's say patrick mahomes has a higher or lower than 220 passing yards if you think he's gonna have more you just click on more when it hits you make a bunch of money. And the best part is you can go to prizefix.com slash rockchalk and use the code rockchalk for a 100% deposit match up to $100. That's prizefix.com slash rockchalk. Use the promo code rockchalk for a 100% deposit match up to $100. You hear from schools fast and it's normally a pretty fast moving process because guys, so many guys are in it. You know, a lot of spots get filled fast, a lot of spots open fast. So if you see a program you like or if you program see players that they like, they like to act on it fast. And um, you got to make sure that you're doing your research or you're going to get left behind pretty quickly. Speaking of that quick turnaround, how fast did you know once you entered the, the portal from Santa Clara that you wanted to go to Kansas? Was that something that like you had like a preconceived notion that that might be an option or was that something that like materialized after you entered the portal? Um, it was actually a tougher decision than I imagined it would be, you know, growing up, you get that, you get that call from Bill self that, you know, you got an opportunity to play for Kansas. It's like, you might as you're, you're telling them that you're going on that phone call, basically, like you don't even have to have another conversation with him growing up. But, um, I had a lot of good schools I was looking at. I took a couple visits and then it kind of came out of nowhere. Um, like Hunter decided to come in late. Um, because he was one of the top guys, so he could kind of take his time. But um, he came in late, and then Coach Self kind of called me while he kind of had a feeling Hunter was making his decision soon. He's like, hey, um, I think, you know, if Hunter Dickinson comes here, then Ernest and Zuby might leave. So that kind of leaves a spot open for a backup big man, and I think that you're a good fit for that role, and I think that you'd fit in well here. And so it kind of made me kind of wait a little bit because that was something I was interested in. And even though I had like a lot of good schools, I had time to go take visits there. And then when Hunter did end up committing and, and Zuby and Ernest left, you know, it was down to a couple. And then Coach Elf was like, hey, like you're a guy like you come here like we won't need another big. And, you know, it's the opportunity of of a lifetime, if you ask me. So 
Um, but once all that kind of materialized, it was kind of a no brainer. Um, I did have a lot of great, uh, like schools come in contact with me. And I, I had a lot of great visits. I loved a couple of different staffs. And um, I just think at that time, it was like a no brainer. It was like, man, I don't know how I would ever pass that up. Like, I don't know if I could live with myself 30 years down the road if I'm like, man, I could have played for Kansas and I didn't, you know? So that's just kind of what where it came down to at the end of the day. Who, what, what was like, once you got the Kansas offer, one coach self kind of told you what was going on and then Hunter committed what kind of pressure were you getting from CB and your parents? Cause you know, I mean, Christian loved his time here. I know your parents love the university. They love coach self. They're treated very, very well here. What was the kind of pressure or were they hands off and just like make the best decision for yourself? Um, no, they do love it here. Um, I talked to them a lot just about like what their thoughts were, but they were both kind of hands off. It was like, make your own decision. You know, we don't want to make it for you. Um, and my parents would have been happy wherever I ended up. Like, you know, I could, I could quit basketball today and they'd be fine. But um, it was mostly just kind of bouncing ideas off them and what their, what their thoughts were, you know, if they thought it was a good fit or, you know, what's, what's coach like, what's it like day to day, like at KU, that's kind of what I talked to Christian about and stuff like that. It wasn't really like, should I do this? Should I do that? It was more like gathering info from him. Kind of same with my parents. What, uh, what did Christian say about his time at KU? Like, obviously, you talked to him about this prior to, to being at KU, but what did he say once you were actually looking at going there? Yeah, he had a blast. A lot of my information was based off of what I saw when he was here. Um, he had a blast, obviously. His experience is a little different than mine because he came here off the rip and he had three years, and uh, his basketball future is probably a little brighter than mine is, but... Um, I only got one chance at this, you know, I only got one year. So I was kind of looking at it like what better way to end your college basketball career than at Kansas, you know, as a kid, you grow up dreaming about putting that Jersey on and, and being here and, you know, just, just being around the game and seeing how the fans and everyone loves Christian and, and how he did here. You know, I think, especially with the team we have this year, it was like, man, I don't know how you, how you'd pass that up. It just seemed like, like destiny at this point. Has it lived up to the the hype that you thought it was? Like, has has your experience so far been what you thought it was going to be? Yeah, it's been awesome. Um, just the city, you know, and, and the fans and everything. It's been so so over the top. You know, you can't even really like really put it to words because um, there's no really way to go in like with expectations. I've never played in front of sixteen thousand people at Allen Fieldhouse. You know, I've been in the crowd, but I've never been on the court. And you know, it's it's hard to really wrap your mind around that before you've ran through the tunnel and, and went, got, like, gone through the layup lines the first time, you know, you can't really prepare for that. You know, even if you have Christian or people that played before, you know, and like I know you guys and I knew people like on the team, even though you're tight with that and you've been around it, there's really no way to have any expectations until you're actually there, you know? So it's a, uh, it's been everything and more if I'm being honest.